Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on hierarchical clustering. In previous class we have discussed about the agglomerative hierarchical clustering. So we know that the basic algorithm assumes each data point as the to be a single cluster and after computing the proximity matrix we have to repeat this process until we get a single cluster. So we have to merge the two closest cluster and we have to update the proximity matrix. So there are three types of hierarchical clustering, mean, max and group average. So we will discuss in this example with the help of mean or single link agglomerative clustering. So in single link agglomerative clustering as you, as you can see whenever we are going to update the data matrix we will be taking the minimum distance between the two clusters. Fine. So let's see with the help of an example. So suppose this is your data set. So the data set you can think of the there are five datas. Okay, each one each having an attribute A and B. So you can consider them to be five students, and they are securing some uh, suppose percentage of absence in a particular class. So in one class they are absent percentage is written like this. In another class they are absent percentage is written like this. So these are the different figures of five different students. Now we are going to cluster them using agglomerative hierarchical clustering with minimum value that is the single link hierarchical clustering. So if you scatter plot these particular students you can see that they will be assuming like this. Okay, They will have, have the basic representation in a graph of two dimensional because there are two attributes are given in one subject A and another subject B. So we plot them in an XY plane and these are the different students. Okay. So if you remember the basic agglomerative hierarchical clustering algorithm, the first thing is to compute the distance metric. Okay. So we have to compute the distance metric of these five students. Okay. So there are five students. So the matrix will be five by five. So you can either take the upper triangular matrix or the lower triangular matrix. The distance function used here is the Euclidean distance. Okay, So we have used Euclidean distance to compute the distance among these five students. So diagonal elements will be zero. So one, the distance between P1 and P2 is calculated and we have I have shown you the value. So distance of P1 and P2 if you are using Euclidean distance value then it will be like 0 0.07 minus 0.85 whole square plus 0.83 minus 0.14 whole square and all things will become under this root over okay so this value results in minus 0.8 whole square this value results in 0 0.69 whole square so after summing up the values it will be resulting it square root of 1.0845 which is ultimately 1.04139 as you can see this value distance between p1 and p2 so using this you can calculate the distance between P2 and P3, P3 and P4, P4 and P2, P4 and P1 and all the pairs, okay, all the different pairs using the same formula, Euclidean distance, you can calculate the all the distances between this particular distance matrix, okay. So we are using here Euclidean distance, you can take any distance function. So after computing the distance function, what we have to do? We have to look for the minimum distance to merge them into a cluster because distance will be minimum that means similarity will be higher so they are more similar. If you compare the whole matrix you can see this this particular value is the minimum. So what what uh, particular row it is assuming it is assuming the column P3 and it is assuming the column P4. So we have to merge the two students P3 and P4 to be one cluster. Why? because their distance is minimum that means distance is minimum means homogeneity is much so they are in the same cluster so in the next slide we are going to merge p3 and p4 together okay so as you can see here so we have merged here p3 and p4 together okay in the earlier cases there were five clusters p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 now there are four clusters p1 p2 P3, P4 are having the minimum value so they are combined into one cluster then P5. 
then see the values of the data matrix you need to update so whenever you are updating the distance metric using the single link hierarchical distance you have to find out the minimum distance between the two clusters okay now see the distance between p1 and p3 p4 this p1 and p3 p4 so to update the distance between p1 and p3 p4 you have to find the dis minimum distance between the cluster p3 and p4 and p1 so how can you find out the minimum distance between the cluster p3 and p4 and p1 so you have to find the distance from p3 to p1 p3 to p1 and distance of p1 to p4 you can see in the earlier matrix p1 to p3 it is 0.59 and p1 to p4 it is 0 0.4609 so one is 0.59 another is 0.46 as you can see in this matrix so what is the minimum value 0 0.46 so you have to update this with this particular value so you are going to update this value p1 and p2 is having the same value as the previous matrix similarly distance between p2 and p3 p4 is calculated by Finding the minimum distance between P2 and P3 and P2 and P4 which is 0.61. Using the same formula we are finding the distance between P3 and P3, P4 and P5. So the distance between P3, P5 and P4, P5 the minimum is 0.35847. So like this we have to uh, repeat these steps until we get the single tone cluster. Okay. So after these steps we are getting this. So in the matrix you have to again search for the minimum value now what is the minimum value i think this is the minimum value 0 0.328 so if you look at the matrix 0 0.3238 is the minimum value now if you see in the column there is p2 and in the row side there is p5 now you have to combine p2 and p5 so after combining p2 and p5 now this will be your matrix earlier there were four clusters p1 p2 this is one cluster this another cluster now there will be three clusters only then you have to update the proximity matrix using the same formula you have to find the distance between minimum distance between p1 to p2 p5 by computing the distance between p1 and p2 and p1 and p5 which is 0 0.81841 and again you have to find the minimum distance between p2 p5 and p3 p4 then you have to find the distance you are getting as the 0 0.35847 okay next after getting this you have to again f repeat the steps because we have you have not secured one cluster now if you see here what is the minimum value this is 3.35847 so 35847 is the minimum value now if you see in the column side there is p2 p5 and the row side is p3 p4 now this both will become a cluster so the class there will be now two cluster one is p1 another is p2 p5 p3 and p4 so if you update the matrix it will be the minimum value between p2 p5 p3 p4 and p1 which is 0 0.46098 as you can calculate using the same formula in the previous slide so like this we can see that now we are getting the single cluster record after combining this we will have a single cluster now what are the thing if you want to visualize this using a dendrogram we can see that First, we have cluster point P3 and P4 in the value 0.30232. Next, P2, P5 were merged at 32388 value. The clusters, these two clusters are merged at 35847 and the last cluster was merged at 0.46098. So, the first cluster P3 and P4 is merged at 0 0.32. Okay. P2 and P5 is merged at 32388. Then, the cluster P2, P5 are merged at 3, 2, 3, 8, 8, which is shown in this diagram. Then P3, P4 and P2, P5. These two clusters are merged at 0 0.353847. Then P1 is merged with this particular cluster at 46098. Then we then get a single cluster. So as you can see that the value will increasing. The value will be always in increasing order in case of single leak hierarchical clustering so you can obtain the dendrogram these are the single clusters and at each level we are getting a new cluster until we get a single cluster so hope you like this video thank you very much